from parliamentary archives, making it as though this speech never happened. Richard Corbett is a member of the British Labour Party. He represents Yorkshire and the Humber in the European Parliament. He was a top proponent of this new measure. Mr. Corbett, thanks for joining us tonight. My pleasure. So can you be specific as to which ideas you're banning? What are the standards for ideas that are not allowed to be expressed and who decides? The Parliament as a whole voted for this measure to prohibit the use of racist and xenophobic language yes. and empowered the President as a fallback, as a safeguard in certain cases, to be able to stop the live transmission of broadcasts. Now this is of course something that is quite, uh, on the face of it, quite draconian. So the presiding officer, the speaker of the parliament, as it were, is only likely to use this in an extreme situation. What, what concerned the parliament, and this rule, by the way, was worked on by a working group with all the different party groupings in the parliament, from the left to the right, right across the spectrum. What they were worried about was what happens if in the European Parliament, which, by the way, is re elected by proportional representation, so right. they have a very wide range of views in the European Parliament, what happens if a m group of members come in, for instance, with banners and start saying things like, you know, all Jews to the gas chamber or something right. like that? Should they be able to use the broadcasting facilities of the Parliament to get that message out to a wider public? There was nothing the president could do at the moment. Now there is this option of being able to say, hang on a minute, this is not something that should be broadcast But again, live. what's the standard? It will still be there on the parliamentary record, but, um, but it won't be broadcast live. But I don't think that anyone, I mean, it goes without saying, no normal person would defend an idea like that. It's appalling. But mm -hmm. it, it won't be limited mm -hmm. to that. It never is. So what's the specific standard? What qualifies? as racist or xenophobic. If I'm opposed to, for example, immigration into my country from a certain part of the world, that's a legitimate political point of view, but it could also be described as xenophobic. So would that be banned? And who, who decides? No, uh, well, uh, the standard of discussion in Europe on that would not normally classify that as being racist, to say that you are opposed to immigration. If you said, I'm opposed to any more blacks coming to my country, or we're too full of Jews, that would be racist or xenophobic, but and that would know? be questioned. Is, but I mean, not to say we... that you're against immigration. Okay, so being specific about it, mm. or saying something that you find ugly, mm. but again, I mean, this is an important thing, you're banning ideas from being transmitted. So how do we know which ones are banned? What's the standard? Or is it just up to the discretion of somebody? And if so, who is that person? Well, it's in the immediate up to the Speaker of the Parliament, whoever is chairing the debate in the Parliament, who is elected by all members of, of Parliament and who is duty bound to act in a, in a reasonable and unbiased way. <laughs> the decision, by the way, can be subject then to, to an appeal um, uh, to the Bureau of the Parliament that's with, uh, elected by the Parliament with members from all the different political factions in the Parliament, so uh, right okay. across the spectrum. Did anybody? But, um, the, immediate decision is the speaker. Okay, but did anybody acknowledge that this is a totalitarian measure? And wouldn't it be better just to make a counter case? If you hear something you find unattractive or wrong, isn't the traditional European response to counter it with what you think is right? And may the most reasonable position win in the eyes of those watching? Uh, until last week, this, these were measures agreed last year by the European Parliament, until last week when somebody ran with a news story on it claiming it was totalitarian, I had never heard any member of the European Parliament claim that this was a totalitarian measure. Preventing people from expressing their views in public? newspaper claiming that. Well, would you uh, well, agree? they're not prevented from expressing their views. They're simply forbidden. Uh, the Parliament may stop the transmission if they are using racist and xenophobic language. Now, the way that would be interpreted Whatever in the Parliament, which by definition is for pluralism and a plurality of views and, the, and for letting a variety of views be expressed, the standard of, of saying this is beyond the pale will be quite a high standard. You, you're not going to rule it out for any, well, any off-the-cuff so remark by some single member. Well, we'll, it's we'll, if there we'll is see. A, an orga I mean, we'll organized see. group of members going okay. out, we'll see. Well, it's, it's, it, 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 you, you, 
we, we will indeed see, and I but can assure you, you that, the, 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 that you won't have willy-nilly some guy saying, oh, you can't say this, you can't say no, that. But this no, is of a course response. you won't. This is a this parliament, is... for heaven's sake. It's a pluralist parliament. Well, it's not. It's, parliament. it's an authoritarian parliament that doesn't like, that wants to ban ideas it disagrees with, obviously. But let me just ask this. Do you believe you can stop populism by banning the ideas behind it? Well, what we shouldn't do is give succor to those who want to spread hate speech, hate messages, demonizing particular races or religions. That's what this is targeted at. Not right. the ordinary diversity of views. Okay. That will go on. There's no problem with that. And, the, and, you know, this is a fallback safeguard provision in case of absolute necessity. <laughs> okay. It's also Orwellian, but I appreciate your explaining it to us. Mr. Corbett, thanks. Okay. Up next, welcome a journalist who spent two years as a hostage.